one of the greatest, Christopher the Saint Samuels. Sometimes the bad guys got to win, like tonight. Go do your job. You've always been a man looking for a second chance. Now you have to look after the church. Pastor Chris, welcome to Westside. Oh, wow. He pulled all his funding from us. We have all these bills in arrears and no way to pay them. There were threats made by local, local gangs. Local gangs and the church isn't doing so well. What are you doing? Are you praying? <laughs> Remember, the world can only be changed by our action. Now, apparently, there's a mass vigilante out there beating people up. You don't say. Where in the Bible does it say, thou shalt not wrestle, huh? I'm not back. Yeah, you are. You just don't want it. Sometimes you should just quit. While you're ahead. Never gives, gives us, us more, more than, than we, we can handle. I know. You're meeting Chris Whaley. <laughs> Believe right. it or not, that's the mask man right there. Good to have you. Mask Thank thanks. you so much what for having me. <clears throat> Hi, good to have you. The whole purpose of this program is to point people to the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when I look at that, mm -hmm. I'm going, how did you evolve into that kind of guy, become a pastor and a youth pastor in all of the things that have happened to you? You and your wife graduated from? Palm Beach Atlantic University. And? Uh, Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary. Wow. I mean, it's, yeah, it's right. amazing. Yeah. But what, and you were a sickly guy. Mm -hmm. Growing up. I mean, I, I mean, I got all your, yeah. all your notes here <coughs> uh, right. uh, in the book. And by the way, by the way, you, you have to get one of the book because uh, from time to time we attend Calvary Church and Dr. Willie Rice is the pastor and he endorses <laughs> this book, and I could read his whole endorsement. What's Great the name endorsement. of the book? Is now, there it is, right on the, on the screen. Okay, the, the mass saint. saint. And uh, what a transition! Mm -hmm. How did that take place? A sickly guy. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, what did you have? You you were really in well, bad shape. Grow, growing up, I was constantly in and out of the hospital, uh, mostly with pneumonia. Uh, had a very low immune system. And then in the fourth grade, I had polio oh, wow. and uh, viral encephalitis. I was in the hospital for three months. Oh my goodness. And learned how to walk all over again. Um, it was 192 different allergies? Yep, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they found that out when I was in junior high school, that I was allergic to everything. And they sent me to Watson Clinic over in Lakeland uh, found out all of these allergies, put me on the medication, <clears throat> excuse me, and all of a sudden I started putting on weight. Uh, I had a wonderful godly doctor and he refused to let me give up and he's the one that encouraged me to lift weights and swim and do all the cardio and so he was responsible for me becoming a gym rat and so I got in this unbelievable great weight shape. Yep, yeah, yeah, I got in great shape and uh, while I was growing up, though, a lot of times when you're sick and in the hospital, you get your nights and your days mixed up. Yeah. And about the only thing they had on late at night was professional wrestling. <laughs> and so I became addicted to it as a child. I just, yeah. I loved it. I loved watching it. And uh, when I could get my dad to take me to the matches, uh, that was just awesome. And so... Uh, now, this, this is professional wrestling. Right. 
Right. Professor. Which we were just talking back in the green room. Yeah. My dad, th this was his, in the 50s, <laughs> it was his favorite television yeah. to watch professional wrestling. Yeah. And I used to say, Dad, it's fake. And he would go, no, it isn't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's funny, he tells a story in the book about yeah. your grandfather that he believed landing on the moon was fake, but wrestling is not. <laughs> but what did you say? You told us different, Chris. Uh, wrestling is not fake. Uh, you, you might know who's going to win, who's going to lose, but uh, it's, it's very difficult to fake a body slam. It's uh, difficult to face getting hit. And I've had my, I've had my jaw dislocated. When I go through all my injuries, I've, I've crushed my ankle. I've had five knee surgeries, torn both ACLs, MCLs. Um, I have no cartilage in either knee. Um, I've had lateral releases. I've had my hips dislocated so many times that. But that's all fake. <laughs> yeah, I've broken all my ribs, my sternum. I've had both my shoulders surgically repaired. Neck injuries, back injuries, had about 10 concussions. Uh, broke my nose so many times I can't breathe out so of it So what today. in the world would make you want to do this? And I, that's what I don't understand. He, he watches his MA. But you loved MA. it. Do you hear what he just said? I loved it. I loved oh, it. I'm, I would, uh, you know, I'm 62. But if I could do it, I would do it. When we were filming, uh, filming the movie <laughs> okay. back in 2013, yeah. Uh, I was 59 when the movie was being filmed. Yeah. And on the first day of filming for wrestling, I was so excited. And it was filmed in this huge arena, 5,000 seat arena. And when I, the car picked me up that morning, took me to the arena, you're up top when you walk in. And I looked down and I saw the wrestling ring and my heart started beating real fast. And then I saw all the wrestlers and I got excited even more. And I went down there and I said, hey, let's get in the ring, you know. And, he said, you're an old man. I'm not going to get in a ring. I said, come on, get in a ring with me. And uh, they have that on the website, matter of fact, at themassaint.com. Uh -huh. You can see when I got into the ring with this guy. And I was 59. I said, body slam me. He said, you're, you're crazy. I said, I haven't had a body slam in 25 years. Come on. <laughs> give me a body come slam. Come on, give me a body slam. <laughs> so he body slammed me in there. And then all of the producers came running down to the ring going like this. We don't have insurance on you. So uh -huh. anyway, but it felt great. Yeah, it felt great being let, body slammed at 59. <laughs> let, let's walk through some of your, uh, and the book is amazing. Uh, it's story after story of, mm -hmm. of uh, you at one point wanted to be the pastor of this one church. And it's the chapter six, the hypocrite. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. this guy that was a mouthy guy in the church, mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you had a was it a ball game? Yeah, softball game, church, and, church league softball. And, and and he blew the game because yeah. of what he did. Right. But he turns and he's blaming other somebody people. on right. the other team. Right. And you had just had enough. I did. And you told him, why don't you shut your big mouth? Yeah, I did. And he did the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. He charged this professional wrestler, yeah. and you decked him. I did. And you were trying. You were the out. pastor. I was, well, he was trying out for the church. No, I, I was the pastor. Oh, I've been okay. The, been the yeah. pastor for five years. Oh, okay. Church. Yeah. But you knew that you were, mm -hmm. you, you were going to have a short pastorate. <laughs> After that day, I thought I was. Yeah. 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 He. Uh, uh, it was. I say in the book, uh, it was like I had a devil on one shoulder and an angel on the other, and the angel was saying, "You're a pastor," and the devil was saying, "Go ahead, hit him." Yeah. And the devil <laughs> won that day. And, so uh, when he woke up, he, he was not happy, and he said he was going to get me fired. And uh, I had an elderly deacon that I would pick up and take to the softball games. After the game, we would always go and have pizza. And so when he got in the car, I said, Bob, I don't, I don't think I'm going to go for pizza today. He <laughs> says, I understand. And I said, I don't think I'm going to be the pastor very long. And, and he You even suggested me. another guy, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So when I got home, I called the chairman of deacons, and I told him what I had done. And I said, we had six retired pastors in our church at that time. Yeah. And so I suggested, get one of the retired guys to preach tomorrow, and I'll resign tomorrow. And um, about an hour later, he called me. He said, I talked to all the deacons. They don't want the retired guys to preach. They want you to preach. Now, you and did something really gutsy when you got in the pulpit. I did. You apologized. I did. Well, I, I, I actually walked down. Yeah. I walked down front, and I had to do it twice. We had an 8.30 service and 11 o'clock. So at 8.30, and the guy I hit was there at the 8.30 service. He was there. <laughs> and um, I st stood before him. I still remember it as if it happened yesterday. I said, folks, I, I've heard of people giving the Lord's work a bloody nose, but I never thought I would be one of those people. But I did yesterday. And I told him what I did. 
I said, I hit a member of this church. His name is, and I named him, and yeah. I said, he's sitting right over there. I said, he's one of the most reprehensible human beings I've ever met. <laughs> but uh, that's, no, that's no reason to do what I did. Yeah. And I've asked God to forgive me. I asked you to forgive me. And I'm asking you as a congregation to forgive me. And I'm going to meet with the leadership this afternoon. And I will do whatever it takes to... to uh, to make this right, and I, I'm, I'm so sorry. I said, I couldn't get up there and preach today without you knowing what I had done. Wow. And then I had to do it all over at 11 o'clock. And then isn't, after, the, isn't the Lord good? Yeah. <laughs> after, the, after I did it at the 11 o'clock, I turned around and I started to walk. I, I said, I couldn't get up there and preach without you knowing what I did. And I turned around and started to walk up to the pulpit, and a guy on the second row stood up and said, I think we should stand in support of our pastor and the entire congregation wow. stood and applauded. And I told my wife driving home, I said, what other pastor in the state of Florida could knock a member of his church on his rear end and get a standing ovation? <laughs> you I did. did. I did. I got I to gotta know the rest of the story though. Did the guy leave the church no, that you No, he was there. I was there at that church for five more years. Yeah. And he cried when I left. And, um, but, but you never and, hit him again. No, anytime he ever <laughs> talked to me, it was always from a distance. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> he wasn't going to get that forearm again. He was a smart man. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is the same guy. I mean, these stories are in the book, but I mean, it goes into depth. Yeah. But, you get to know but, the, you but, get to know who you're interviewing this way. I know, but but I mean, yeah, I love MMA fighting, and that's not that they don't know who the outcome is going to be. By the way, that's when they get in there, it's either mm -hmm. either the one guy walks out if he can, mm -hmm. but but they don't know who's going to win. Except usually the guy with the belt is usually the best. Or he wouldn't be in the ring, but, but it, it but it's, so that's kind. Of, I'm hooked on that. So I'm, I've always thought that I'd love to be one of those guys. I used to wrestle in high school, and that was mm -hmm. my. I mean, I loved going mm -hmm. and practicing. They'd have to pull me out of the gym. Right. And uh, so I, I can understand your love of it because somehow, I don't know. I guess there's certain personalities that get hooked on it. Right. And you've got to have that personality. Right. He was in line at McDonald's. <laughs> this guy, this guy, in front was just, just berating the girl mm -hmm. that was taking his order. He was? No, 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 no. no. Somebody he else. He was behind the guy. Okay. And he, he was, and so he stares listening to this, and she would have to go over because apparently the guy wasn't speaking good English, and she'd have to, okay, let me get this straight, you know, whatever, and and he just, I mean, just let her have it. And, and he, he, he told the guy, you know, I mean, this girl is getting minimum wage mm -hmm. and you've got her crying now. Mm -hmm. and, and you suggested never do this again. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I, I just kind of reached up and put my hand on his shoulder and squeezed nice and tight and said, <laughs> you know, poor young lady, 16 years old, making minimum wage. And, you know, you don't, you don't have to be a jerk to this young lady. And, um, and after a little while, he said, you know, I, I guess I, we have a misunderstanding or whatever. Yeah. yeah there, there's a lot of yeah. people like that. You run into them all the time. Mm -hmm. But but you you were taking the chance of the guy coming around with a fist and, and decking oh. you. Well, I don't really worry about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, I don't worry about that. <laughs> but, but and then the, this is another occasion in the book. There was this, you know, the book is, I mean, it's, it's a real testimony of what Christ can do mm -hmm. with the most unusual guy that likes the most unusual way of life. Mm -hmm. It's just, I mean, a mask on and a, and a you know. I'm, so that's how you wrestled? You wrestled with yeah. a mask on? Well, you saw it in the movie. Yeah, yeah no, uh, no, I, I, when I first started as a professional wrestler, I did not, but I was a youth minister in a church, yeah. and my wife was pregnant with our first child. I was making $12,000 a year, and we were starving to death. Now, that's a typical Baptist <laughs> church, okay? <laughs> it's not charismatic. Charismatic yeah. really pay good. Yeah. Now they do. Yeah. Yeah. Years ago, they probably did. Baptists yeah. give you enough, you know, <clears throat> you can buy donuts and coffee, and that's about it. So I went to the senior pastor, and I asked him, I said, you know, I could wrestle a couple of nights a week and it would really help us financially. And he said, absolutely not. We're not going to turn this church into a circus. And uh, I said, okay. So I, I was watching wrestling on TV because I, I still watch it even when I'm not in the ring. I watch it to see what other people sure. are doing. And, and Ed McMahon, um, or McMahon has taken it to another level. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But when I saw the friend of mine who wrestled with a mask, or we called it worked under a hood, yeah. uh, you know, I said, that's it. That's it. And my my sister is an unbelievable seamstress. And I uh, I said, could you make me a white mask? And she did. She made my first 
mask and I ordered So that's white, why you did it. I ordered white trunks. <laughs> I ordered white, white trunk. trunks, white tights. I had white boots. I had a white cape. And I changed my name and I started wrestling as the same. So you were making a living now. Yeah. But I was wrestling a couple nights a week and nobody knew it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> now I would go to church. Were you winning? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, but I would come to church and I'd have like a black eye or, you know, bruises <laughs> and stuff and broke nose and... <laughs> And people said, what happened to you? And I said, I fell down. And that was the truth. Yeah. But I had a lot of help doing it. Yeah. 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 I hang out at the bar a lot. I know <laughs> I'm a pastor. But, but, no. it's, but, it, but it's, it's, it's amazing, this, this mm -hmm. lifestyle. I mean, you were talking about you would take a church and your wife was making a good living and then you decide you wanted to, you know, be a pastor. Mm -hmm. And, and you'd have to go back to, you Seminary. know, crackers and cheese. Yeah. Oh, oh that's okay. You know, we left, uh, we left Lakeland, Florida in 1985 uh, to go to Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary. Uh, I made more money than I have ever made in my entire life since that time. Uh, I think I made $90,000 that year in 1985. That was and Baptist? No, I was not a pastor in 1985. Oh, wrestling. Oh, wrestling. Okay, gotcha. <clears throat> so okay. we... Uh, I thought we were moving... And so we left, uh, left yeah. Lakeland and okay. went to Southwestern yeah. Seminary to, to, to get, get my Master's of Divinity. Um, but when, when we left, we left a home on a lake, uh, just gorgeous. It was our dream home. And we moved into uh, what I call the gospel ghetto. It was like <laughs> 600 square feet. And the first time my girls walked in, they went, yuck. Yeah. Because it smelled bad. And, yeah. and, my wife was uh, a high school math teacher. Now, were you sure of this calling? Absolutely. You, you didn't have a doubt when you're no. stretching your foot out no. and you're actually in the kitchen? <laughs> no, I was not. I, was, I had no doubt. This is what God called me to do. Yeah. And, uh, but it was great. While I was in seminary, I, I got to wrestle. See, I, I wrestled my last three years while I was in seminary. I'd go to seminary in the daytime, and then at night I would wrestle. And uh, there were probably 4,000 students at Southwestern, but there was only one professional wrestler who was also going to be a minister. And so it, you asked me, why would you do this? It gave me so many opportunities to share my faith uh, all over the state of Texas and Oklahoma and Louisiana and Mississippi, uh, everywhere. Oh, they're going to listen to you. Yeah. So yeah. It, was a, it was a great time. It was a great time. I, I was just, wrestling. I was just, uh, I had uh, Dave, my director, show, uh, I, I like NASCAR, you know, Jeff Gordon, mm -hmm. but the guy that played you in this movie, mm -hmm. Can you show that on the screen, Dave, yeah. for me? Look, look at, there's the guy that played you. Yeah, Brett Grandstaff, yeah. Okay, now look at Jeff Gordon. Okay. Look at Jeff Gordon. <laughs> I mean, they look like, they it's do. unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. I mean, go back to him again if you can, Dave. I don't yeah. know if you can. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it, the guy looks like Jeff Gordon. It's yeah. amazing. When I first yeah. saw this picture, I'm going, oh, my goodness. So, so, so you're a NASCAR me. fan. Oh, yeah. You know what NASCAR stands for? Tell me. Non-athletic sport centered around rednecks. <laughs> Oh, you're good. That says good. That's it. That says the whole... I, w I yeah. want to hear how the movie came about. Well, I, I wrote the book hoping that it might be made into a TV series. When, when Michael Landon died, mm -hmm. uh, as far as putting something good and moral on TV, he died with it. Uh, you know, Little House on the Prairie, Highway to Heaven, those were great shows that yeah. families could enjoy, and nobody was doing that. And after I finished the book, I thought, you know, each chapter could be made into uh, a, a one-hour episode. You're absolutely right. Yeah, and so, and, and I tried to contact his son, Michael Landon Jr., and, and I couldn't yeah. contact him. But um, my sister uh, was working in a school in Orlando, and uh, a movie producer's wife and, and uh, kids, or their kids were going to that school. And so my sister gave uh, the movie producer's wife a copy of my book. And then he uh, read it, and he called me in, and he did some he did some pretty big movies, uh, and he called me in, kept me on the hook for almost a year, and then changed his mind and said no. But during that time, I met a lot of people in the movie business, and uh, I had a producer who flew down from Canada and met me at Disney World, loved the story, loved the book, um, and then two more years went by. I'd given up. I was so frustrated with them because the, the whole thing is, is so stressful. That's the way the industry is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I, I put it on a shelf and said one day my grandkids can pull it off the shelf and say, look what Grandpa did. But, yes. Um, in February of 2013, uh, I was actually on my way to the gym and I received a phone call and it was the movie producer in Canada and he said, 
has anyone done anything with your book? And I said, no. And I rolled my eyes when I said it. <laughs> and he said, okay. And I said, uh, take care. And then two weeks later, he called me. He said, are you sitting down? I said, yeah, as a matter of fact, I am. He said, we're going to make your book into a movie. And I said, are you serious? He said, absolutely. He said, we're going to begin filming in July. Well, they didn't film it until November, but they, the uh, script took so long. Did you oversee the script or the, the, the actual? I had the opportunity to read the script and make suggestions okay. to it. Okay. Um, and you, didn't, you didn't watch the movie actually being made? I was there, yeah. Okay, yeah, you were I there. Was there. Okay. They flew my wife and I wow. there. So where'd they make it? Uh, it was filmed in Sault Ste. Marie, Canada. Oh, wow. Yeah, in November. That's why in the movie they say it takes place in Michigan. Uh, everything takes place in Florida. Yeah. But for the sake of the movie, we don't have snow on the ground here yeah. in Florida. Right. So they had to make some kind of adjustment. And so they say that the, move, the, uh, the church was in Michigan, but it, it was in Florida. Yeah. yeah. They changed that part. Yeah, well, it's movies. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's movies. They changed it. They really did. Uh, yeah. So you said it's, it's even on Netflix now. It is, it's in Redbox, uh, a lot of the Walmart stores have, have the uh, DVD, yeah. and it's also on Netflix. It's amazing. It's been on Netflix since June, and it's just done incredible on Netflix. Yeah. Uh, a lot of times it's, it's been in the it most popular list. It doesn't look like your normal Christian production. No, it doesn't. You know, I am, I'm a fan of faith-based films. I really am. I, mm -hmm. I, I love faith-based films. But if we continue to make salvation films for Christians, mm -hmm. it's going to die out. Yeah. Um, I like the fact that it's a faith-based film, and uh, it's uh, so different than yeah. anything you've seen. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, but it is a faith-based film. It, it's right. interesting. Uh, <laughs> get back to his lifestyle. You saw this guy smacking his girlfriend or whatever mm -hmm. in the car, mm -hmm. and. <laughs> I know why you love this. Yeah, no. <laughs> I could live his life. Yeah. Uh, but, and, and so he happened to be in the bathroom, the guy's coming out of the stall, right? Mm -hmm. And what did, you, what did you tell him? Well, you know, uh, <laughs> I, I just wanted to see how he could do against somebody who could hit back, really. Yeah. Uh, I, I had so many of those episodes happen to me. I didn't think they were ever going to end. But what is amazing is he gives him this talk, yeah. and, and, he, and he, you know, you think the guy's got the message. So he turns his back, and the guy gives him a chop. Yeah, yeah. hit me. And that was not good. Yeah, no, he didn't do it very well. <laughs> so anyway, I, I turned around and showed him how to do it. So. And as you're looking down on the floor. So now you're fighting in the, in the men's restroom. <laughs> yeah, I, you know. Were you um, a pastor then? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I think one of the oh, yeah. one of the last incidents that happened, uh, the last church that I, I pa that I was a senior pastor of, uh, we were in revival, and had a great evangelist with us, and I had my suit on, went out to the car, and I heard uh, a, a very bad curse word dropped, and we had a school they met on our campus, we had a preschool. And, I, and I'm looking, who is saying this on a church campus? And way across the parking lot, I saw a young man hitting his pregnant girlfriend. I didn't know this. I found out afterwards, but anyway. And I screamed across the parking lot. And I said, hey, and then he screamed back, and he cussed at me. So I started walking towards him. And as I'm walking towards him, I dropped my glasses. I took my coat off, and I, and I, I got to, got to, I said, young man, you are, you're in a church parking lot. I said, you shouldn't be using language like that, and you certainly shouldn't be hitting this young lady, and especially one who is pregnant. And, and then he, he lunged towards me and said, it's none of my blanking business and all, and, and it happened again. I mean, and I, I body slammed him on the concrete, and uh, it was over before I knew it. And uh, so I had to stand before the church that night, you know, in a revival, and say, "Hey, you're not going to believe what I did." And, and they they clapped again when they did that. So it was just just crazy things that I did. Don't mess with this preacher. Mm. Oh, I made it but fun. I mean, but but you're deceiving, you know. Yeah, I mean, you are. I mean, we met in the green room, and he looks like a preacher. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know you what don't that. Don't look scary. I don't know what that means. <laughs> 
uh, or an insurance salesman, whatever. <laughs> but but I mean, it's very deceiving. I mean, you can see why people would, you yeah, know, go. Be afraid. You got to be kidding me! What did you just say to me? And and, and then it's over. Yeah. Well, you know, God, uh, it, it's amazing how He has protected me all of these years. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. It's amazing. What, what a great family, two children. I have two wonderful godly do uh, daughters. They are married to two wonderful godly son-in-laws. And a wonderful wife, Verna. Uh, almost 42 years. Wow. Yeah, she's a retired high school math teacher. And uh, So you, you, you married smart, too. I did. I now, did, did she did she have no problem with your wrestling and all that oh, fighting? Yeah. Oh, yeah, she did. Oh, she oh, did. Yeah. <laughs> Would you? Yeah, yeah. Would you? Yeah. But well, she, now I, I like she, her. She put up with me. She put <laughs> no. up with me. She, yeah, she did. And, um, but she understood you. Yeah, she, she knows, uh, she knows my heart next next to God. Yeah, she right. knows my heart better than anyone. So. Mm -hmm. Somebody watching, mm -hmm. <clears throat> they didn't know why, but they're going to find out. Right. That's your camera. Share Christ with them. About two minutes. In two minutes. <laughs> the greatest thing that ever happened to me was the Lord Jesus Christ coming into my heart. And I, I love the passage in Jeremiah 18 where he told Jeremiah to go to the potter. He's going to teach him a great lesson. And when he saw the potter working with the clay, when he finished with it, it was full of flaws. And the scripture says it was marred in the hands of the potter. And so he took that same piece of clay, squished it back together, put it back on the clay, uh, back on the wheel, and made it into a new vessel. And then he said, Cannot I do the same with you as the potter is done with the clay? Or as the clay is in the hand of the potter, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. When Chris Whaley got through with his life, it was full of flaws. God was able to take me with all of those flaws, put me back on the wheel, and make me into a new vessel. One that was useful, one that has served him since then. And so I deal with so many people who think because of their past, uh, something from their past that they are eliminated from the kingdom of God. And I just want you to know you're not. Allow God to put you back on the wheel and make you into a new vessel. And there are so many great churches in this area in yes. Florida. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and I would love to mention all of them to you. Yeah. Um, but don't just, just sit there today and stay in your house and say, go find a church that's preaching the true word of God yes. that has a great man of God leading it and get involved in that church. Tell that pastor what you, that you want to know Christ as your Lord and Savior. Um, you know, the, Paul said that if we uh, confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that the Lord Jesus Christ has been raised, then we can be saved and you can be saved. And uh, I, I pray that you would find a church and serve him the rest of your life. Amen. 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 How to start the new year? Trust Christ mm -hmm. as your personal Lord and Savior. God bless you. Thank you for watching It's Time. If you have recently made a decision for Christ, Herman and Sharon would like to hear from you.